Uh, hi, uh, continuing on our uh, 5G NR series and uh, focusing on how different it is from LTE. Um, this is third in the series and I'm going to focus on some of the downlink data transmission aspects. My name is uh, Srikant and I'm with NanoCell Networks. So if we look at the processing chain uh, on the radio, we have very similar steps as in LTE. Uh, we start with the transport block, then we go through a bunch of things which look very similar. So the first difference uh, that we would notice is that the coding is not turbo coding for the data. It is actually a new code called as LDPC. Okay. Low density parity check codes have been used in many areas, most prominently in the Wi-Fi area uh, for the last two generations. And so now it finds itself into the 3GPP space, especially for the EMBB and whatever has been standardized on the URLC front. Okay. So, and for the corresponding control channels, we have what is called as polar codes, uh, which are again new. Uh, we used to use convolutional codes in LTE. So that's one difference that needs to be kept in mind. Looking at the other steps in the processing of the data in the radio, uh, what you will find is that very similar as in LTE, we will come to some MIMO specific aspects in another uh, video, but it looks very similar. So pointing out some difference apart from the coding, let's look at a few other aspects, especially on the downlink uh, data part for this video. So one of the things which is very important to kind of keep a note of is in LTE, the transport block sizes were easily obtainable from a lookup table. So if you know the resource blocks and the features like MCS, MIMO layers, etc., then the transport block size was readable from a table. Okay? This table was there in the 3GPP specs. In 5G NR, things are not going to be very simple. So LTE had a very simple mapping. Once you had the MCS layers and the number of PRBs, you got your TB size. 5G, because of the flexibility with respect to the allocation, gives room to a lot of interesting uh, possibilities. So the transport block size, uh, unless it is smaller than a certain number, it is not going to be readable out of a table. It is actually calculated using a formula. Okay? So this becomes some difference compared to LTE where it was a simple lookup table. Now it could be a lookup table or it could be a formula depending on the size. HARC has been one of the important things which has been around with us uh, in LTE as well as just prior to that. Very important for the robustness on the radio communication side. And as we all know, in HARC we have these redundancy versions. So we continue with the four redundancy versions as in LTE. However, the major difference, and since we are taking downlink here, the most notable difference is this time between the data and the ACK coming on the uplink control channels. This time is not fixed as in LTE. In LTE, if you are in an FDD system, this was fixed at 4 milliseconds. For TED, it would be always greater than or equal to 4 milliseconds. But now, in 5GNR, this is not fixed and this is actually indicated in the control channel when the allocation is done. Okay, So we have a flexible time relationship between the data and ACK. So this becomes one major difference. There are a few other differences like the number of HARC processes are increased over LTE, but the flexible time handling of the ACK max relative to when data appeared or the allocation appeared is a very important difference. Another difference also exists in the heart and that's going to be our focus in the next few slides. This is to do with an idea called as code block groups, short form CBG. So if you look at how the transport block uh, comes down, uh, a transport block usually has a CRC attached for error detection at the receiver. And because of certain coder uh, limitations, 
uh, we usually divide the transport blocks into what are called as code blocks. This has been around in LTE as well. Each of those code blocks also have the CRC. Um, now we could have very large transport block size because remember that uh, we have you know one of the aspirations of 5G is very high data rates in certain cases. So large transport blocks are a reality and you will have to split it into a number of code blocks. Now one option in case you don't want to retransmit the entire code block uh, or rather transport block is to send an ACK NAC for every code block. Now this would be too much uh, because of the number of ACK NACs you would have to send. Okay. The alternative in LT was that we never sent an ACK NAC for code blocks, we sent an ACK only for the transport block. So now in 5GNR we have an intermediate idea that we can group a bunch of code blocks, here I have shown two as an example, configurable, into another entity which is new in 5G called code block group. And these code block groups which are configurable by RRC can now have their individual ACK NAC. Okay. So now this becomes an intermediate step where we don't act at the level of code block or go very coarse at the left transport block. We can do something intermediate configurable. Now I came to this idea from a large size transport block but there's another motivation for this. The other motivation for code block group is that as you will see is that as URLC picks up one of the interesting things is that the URLC data has to be scheduled possibly preempting the mobile broadband data. So when such things happen, what you might find is that certain code block groups might get hit, not the entire transport block. So this allows us for selective retransmission of certain code block groups instead of sending the whole transport block. So these are some of the differences. We will come back to more differences even on the downlink data. As usual, please visit our website for more information. Thank you.